that. All right, so just to take a look at some of the captive web portal pages, you can uh, modify the uh, web pages that are already included in Hive Manager, or you can import your custom web pages. We're going to go ahead and, and uh, take a look at the web pages that come with Hive Manager. So click on the Custom Web Page button. That'll bring up another window where you can actually see different items that you can change on this web page. Let's hit Preview and take a look at what that page looks like. So here's the page. It's an acceptable use policy. You can change this and uh, make it anything uh, that you want that's relevant to your company. Uh, of course, this is what the user is going to see when they log on to uh, the guest SSID. Uh, they can accept uh, the use policy acceptance, and then they would get access uh, to the network. All right, let's, uh, I'm going to hit return so we can go back, and you can see the different items that you can change. The header image, the footer image, uh, the use policy, uh, uh, the foreground color, and the background image as well. You can change all those things. All right, I'm going to go ahead and hit cancel here uh, since we're not actually going to uh, change anything there. Uh, you can also change uh, the success page, the portal uh, failure page, and we have additional advanced options where you can, uh, say, send someone to uh, a different web page once they're connected. Uh, we also have a registration period that you can keep a user logged in for. Uh, so when they're in the guest account after a certain amount of time, uh, they can actually be asked to uh, log back in again. Now, in addition to this type of uh, 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 feature for guest networking, Arrowhive does have a product called Guest Manager that allows guests to create their own usernames and passwords, or, or their own accounts, actually, and Guest Manager will generate uh, random uh, usernames and passwords for them uh, that are good for a certain amount of time. Uh, guest Manager can also be used by, say, a receptionist or a front desk person, uh, when uh, when you go in and actually lo uh, sign into a uh, uh, to go into a company, uh, so guest manager is pretty useful. That is another product that's an add-on uh, to uh, Hive Manager, uh, but for simple guest networking, we can provide the uh, the captive web portal. All right, so let's go ahead and save our captive web portal. Um, let's see here. It looks like guest CWP already exists, so I'm going to create. Uh, I'll put a couple of uh, I'll put 01 at the end since uh, we already have one called CWP01. I guess I created that earlier. Anyways, uh, that's a captive web portal. It's applied to our guest SSID. And let's go ahead and uh, what we'll do here under the user information, this user is a guest, so we'll go ahead and click guest. What that does is it applies a firewall policy. Every single one of our access points contains a, contains a stateful firewall policy, and we can actually uh, permit or deny traffic right at the access point. So we do it right at the edge. There's no reason to do it at a controller. Uh, we do it right on the access point. Uh, so for the guest uh, account, we actually apply a firewall rule which denies anything to any private network. Uh, and then allows anything else. Uh, and what we can do now is let's go ahead and take a look at that firewall policy. Uh, so in the guest SSID, uh, I have different options. I can do uh, GRE or VPN tunneling. Uh, there are QoS setting, settings. Uh, I can even provide a user availability schedule, like can this user get on uh, only between 8 and 5. Uh, uh, there's also SLA settings, so you can give precedence to certain users over uh, other users. Um, let's just uh, configure the firewall, or at least take a look at the firewall configuration. This is a pre-made uh, firewall rule that comes with Express, uh, the Express version of Hive Manager. Uh, you can create a new one by hitting the plus mark, or you can go in and just modify. Let's go in and take a look at the guest internet access firewall policy. What this does is it basically allows DHCP, so the user that connects can actually get a, uh, an IP address. It allows DNS, so that way a user can uh, resolve domain names. Then what we do is we deny anything going to the 10 network, anything going to the 172.16 network, and anything going to the 192.168 network. Those are all private networks. 
uh, if companies are using a private network, this would uh, basically disallow any traffic from the guest network to get to any one of those networks. They're not routable on the Internet, so we may as well just go ahead and block all of them. So it covers any private network that could be out there. Uh, the last rule we put in, of course, is an any, any, any permit. That'll allow any other traffic to go out to the Internet. Of course, you could build a custom rule that would, you know, say throttle it down to HTTP traffic or HTTPS traffic only. And that way they would only be able to web browse uh, out to the Internet. So this is the default rule. Uh, I'm going to hit cancel since uh, it's already created. Now, once we have uh, the firewall rule applied, uh, what I've done is uh, created a default rule also, or a default action of deny. That's basically going to deny anything, uh, whether this firewall rule uh, or firewall policy is in there or not. So let's go ahead and save this user profile. All right, there we go. So we've created a guest SSID. Uh, it's open, but we put a captive web portal on it and protected it with a use policy acceptance. Uh, and we also created a guest account with a firewall rule that only allows access out to the Internet. So let's go ahead and save that. Now we have our two SSIDs. Uh, in Express, it puts it in a single wireless LAN policy, and that wireless LAN policy is automatically applied to the access points. Once you've created your config, uh, you can push it out to all of your access points. And the way we'll do that is we can check this uh, top box here. That'll actually check mark all of the access points that we have in our list. Uh, and then we'll go to Update, Upload and Activate Configuration. Now, we have some settings that we can change here. And what I'm going to do is set this to activate after five seconds. Uh, initially, it was set to activate at next reboot. And you would have to reboot the access points uh, every single time you wanted a config to, uh, to take effect. So this will actually uh, have the, the config take effect at right after five seconds. The reason why we, we uh, have a wait time of five seconds is our access points support mesh networking. So you can actually have an access point connected off of a me mesh connection. It doesn't have a wired uh, connection to it. It's got a mesh connection. Um, and you don't want it to, you don't want the uh, access point that it is meshing to which has the wired connection, to actually reboot before uh, the meshed AP has its configuration. So we give, give it a five-second lag to make sure that uh, any mesh-connected APs will successfully get their entire config before uh, the other APs reboot. So anyways, that's the five-second lag. It'll activate afterwards. When you first get an access point, when it's coming from factory defaults, it will require a reboot after the first config push. Once that's done, anytime you push a config to the access point, it will take effect automatically without needing to reboot. So I'll go ahead and save those changes and set the upload. And uh, we'll get a status bar. It'll show all of our access points and show a status bar of uh, the config actually being pushed out to the access points. And if we have issues with any one of them, uh, that would show up in the uh, in the status section. All right, and you can see the uh, the status. We've got all of our access points here, and it's currently preparing the access points uh, to push the config. Now, just keep in mind this uh, our Hive Manager. We have uh, an online version uh, where you can actually uh, where, where we host the Hive Manager and your access points will actually reach out to our Hive Manager to make the connection. It's always initiated from the access point outwards. Once that session is made, though, the uh, Hive Manager can push things to the access point, but uh, the connection is always initiated from the access point outbound through your firewall uh, to our hosted Hive Manager. You can also purchase Hive Manager to be ran locally in your network, too. Uh, it's either an appliance or a software version uh, uh, which runs on VMware. And you can see now the uh, access points are receiving their configurations. All right, uh, the access points are receiving their configuration. Uh, while we're waiting, I'm just going to click back into uh, the Hive APs. Uh, we can see the list again. So 
This basically Hive Manager uh, allows you to push configurations to all the access points that you have. When you're in enterprise mode, you can configure different wireless LAN policies and group access points uh, into different groups. Uh, in, in Express, you basically have one single uh, uh, wireless LAN policy. All of your access points fall into that policy. And uh, when you push config, it basically goes out to all of your access points, uh, and they'll pretty much have the same features and functionality. Once the config is pushed, uh, you'll actually see the SSIDs that we created. You could connect, connect up to them. Uh, you could connect up to them, and uh, your wireless LAN is basically set. It's that simple. Uh, it's extremely easy to use, uh, very user-friendly. Uh, as you can see, uh, we created two SSIDs uh, and pushed the configuration out. Now, there are some other things that I'd like to show you on Hive Manager. Uh, the topology tool, <clears throat> which we'll go into right now, clicked on topology, and what this tool allows you to do is uh, two things. One is you can actually create uh, heat maps and, uh, and actually plan uh, the placement of your access points. You can figure out the number of access points that you need uh, as well as where to place them, and you do that by uploading floor plans and then uh, drawing walls and placing access points uh, to see how many that you need. And that's what we'll go ahead and do. The other thing that you can do, once you do have access points installed, you can use those same maps and associate an installed access point with a map, and then those access points will actually show up on the map. You can move them around to where they're installed, and then you can use it for location services. Um, what the APs will do is, the APs do background scanning on the radios, and they can detect other radio signals. So they'll pick up clients, of course, but they'll also pick up rogue APs.